So congratulations to you both. I love the single, love the album too. When you were a kid, did you sing with your father? No, I didn't sing with him. He would wait. He, he would. He had this habit of like just putting me on a table in front of everybody and saying, <laughs> saying something <laughs> to me. And sometimes I did, and sometimes I was too shy. Uh -huh. Just a little bit of pressure then. <laughs> yeah, but um, I didn't know that in that way. I just always thought it was funny. He used to just yeah. come here and sing blah, blah for them. Yeah. You know? How oh, great. And so pulling this whole album together as well, I mean, to get those people from the past, it, it just, it, it's a bit of magic. Yeah, it really was. I mean, you know, the whole concept of the record was a bit magical. It was the coming and thinking, because you know, Elvis loved gospel music above all, and it wasn't just his favorite music, it really, it's what grounded him, it's what he really loved when he was upset, it's what he would go to after a couple of concerts, he was always listening to gospel, uh, and it was a really magical progression uh, that led to you know, Lisa doing this tremendous performance, and what was the most obvious is every single musician who was on this record, uh, even though Elvis had passed for many, many years, was trying to impress him like I'd never seen before in a studio. Everyone was trying to do their best for Elvis. You know, we were all crying in, in the control room while Lisa was performing. It was just really, it was magical. So they were crying. How did you feel? I mean, you've done it before, but again, I mean, as time goes on, do your feelings change? I was tech, thinking technically, what harmony above or below and mm -hmm. stuff, and then I, I hadn't read the, uh, then I looked at the lyrics and I was like, oh my God, because I wasn't familiar with this particular song. Um, and I was just like, oh my God, this is my life right now. And, and I don't think I sang it very much. It was maybe three or four takes, but mm -hmm. whatever, I just felt really emotional. It's never pleasant to sing and cry. It mm -hmm. just doesn't happen very, it just, you just can't do that. In, in a good way, so <laughs> I had to keep my composure a bit, but um, yeah, I, I, uh, I felt very connected to him and to the song. You know, I, I was lucky, I had my dad for most of my life, from, you know, to like a good, good age, you lost obviously your dad younger, but do you like talk to your dad, do you think about him every day, how does that work? No, I don't, I wouldn't say I talk to, um, I... <clears throat> just remember everything and all the, you know, all the, I just can sort of pull out of the files, you know, whatever memory I had and stuff like that. And just hope that he's, you know, maybe occasionally ask for help. Yeah. Um, which was the case with this record too. Like I just felt like a hand came down to me. Like really? This, you know, it felt like that a little bit. Yeah. Because I mean, the words are just so powerful, aren't they? Yeah, because I read it and I thought, my God, I know his struggles. You know, a lot of people know what those were. I just, I just had the same struggles. For, you know, in the last few years, I had a really rough, rough go. So, it was like the perfect thing. Like, you know, I was like, okay, he went through this. He went through this. He went through this. You know, mm -hmm. and he's gonna help. Maybe this is some kind of sign. You know, that's why I did it. It was just, a, it felt like a sign of some sort. Yeah, and the concept for this started. You know, in the, you know, 3 a.m. in the back of Graceland, where it just hit me, I was speaking with a, a film director, uh, and it was just that this was the right time and place. And I had asked Lisa after uh, she had done the recording. By the way, after the, the, the take she did after the gravitas, after the weight hit with, 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 with the words, uh, was the take that you hear on the record. And it was one of the most incredible takes. You can't, you know, discern where. Elvis ends and Lisa. Is it above? Is it below? And it's just, it's one of the most incredible performances I've ever, ever heard in my life. Uh, but I asked her afterwards, I said, if you, could, if you could ask your dad, if you could say one thing to your dad, what would it be? And she, and she said, a little bit of help. Uh, and I think what's really happening here is that this is the help that her dad's able to give her. Growing up and, and watching your dad and obviously hearing all the, his love of gospel, but was your dad quite religious as well, would you say? Very, very much so. Yeah? Very much so. He always had books stacked up this high next to his bed, you know, and they were all religious. If you go up to his bedroom, there's a little office connected, and there's just nothing but books of every religion and every kind of, it's a million Bibles, and, you know, he was constantly searching, mm. and he was very connected to gospel and yeah. that sort of thing. Obviously, we're just here in the, in the, in the shadow of Graceland as well, and there is that area where the public are not allowed. Is that an area then when you can go for like a little bit of solace? Mm, absolutely. 
It's so the one place I feel the safest ever. Mm -hmm. If I get the key that I, I do keep, key, I keep the key to upstairs with me. If I take that key and just like shut that door up there, which is just his room and my room, and kind of where he was his sort of sanctuary. Um, if I, I can just sort of shut that door and, and, and like feel the safest and the calmest that I could possibly feel is upstairs. And is it just the same as it always was? Exactly the same. Uh, and w was that bit of the house, because it was the, the private rooms, is that not as showy? Is that a good description? You know, was it, it was just more like a home, it was bedroom. Oh, it's showy. Yeah. <laughs> it's got <laughs> long red, no, not red, like shag carpet that's about that long. <laughs> Black bed, red walls, <laughs> gold, everything here and there. It's not <laughs> and also got the new exhibit as well. So again, the, the memories, I mean, are, are there like memories coming back that you thought, oh my goodness me, i completely forgotten that. Yes, very much. I, I, I was like, why another, why an exhibit on me? Nobody cares, who cares? I don't know. When, <laughs> and then I went in and I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool too. Anything particularly in this new exhibit that, that hit home or it was different or something that was almost new to you? Um, there was a quote on the, on the wall as I was leaving the exhibit and it, was, it said something like, Being, becoming a father is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I had never seen it before last night. It was the first time I saw it, so it was really cool. Wow. What did that feel like? I mean, really, really feel like? That I, I knew there was a great love there, you know. I knew that there was a really strong connection um, since the minute I can remember. So, and, I, and it kind of reinstates what I felt was the truth, which is that. Mm. I felt like I was the most important thing to him, and I felt like our relationship was special, so it was something that kind of acknowledged that. Because yeah. you've often said about being daddy's girl and, and getting away with things. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was a terror, absolute terror. <laughs> What was the worst thing as a kid? Well, one of the th I just saw in the video. There's a there's a little there's a running sort of home video section. Yeah. And as we were doing an interview earlier, I looked at the at the screen and I see myself as like maybe three, four, and I grabbed some somebody, tried to take a present from me or something, and I was like, <laughs> ripping it back, knocked the person over. Um, yeah. So I just I'd never seen that one before either. <laughs> You were a monster. That was a little terror. <laughs> and what has surprised you as you've delved back into all these incredible songs and these incredible memories? Has anything surprised you, Joel? Just the, the performances. They're just they're awe-inspiring when you listen to take after take because we were able to go back into you know, the masters and really alternate takes and a lot of things you'll never, you have never heard before. It's just how effortless it was. But it was effortless, but at the same time, every gospel song that he recorded, he sang it as if it was the first and it was the last time he ever sang it. He sang it like he was, he was coming, you know, that nothing mattered before and that nothing mattered after and the passion and it was just, it was amazing. And then when Lisa with the duet with, you know, you know, it was just so amazing that she actually, after feeling the words, after really, you know, getting comfortable with them, gave that same type of performance. If you ever want, if anyone ever doubted that Lisa, you know, obviously she looks so much like her dad, but if you ever doubt it, listen to, the, listen to them singing together, mm -hmm. and that would be proof enough in a court of law for me. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it, it's, it's amazing how she really, ra you know, she, she, you know, Elvis is the, you know, to me, the greatest performer of the modern time, mm -hmm. and for her to be able to step up and sing with her dad. It wasn't just, hey, you know, I'm gonna do this. It was, she was there with him. And when you hear it, it's like, is that, is that Lisa, is that her dad, is that Lisa, is that her dad? Uh, and I've never heard that before in any type of situation like this. Just extraordinary. Is there anything that you're discovering about your father? Because, you know, we, we all feel, because growing up with him, watching him, we've listened, we've heard. It's, are there any things as you go along the way, you go, oh, my goodness me, never knew that? Nothing surprises me <laughs> at all, anywhere. But um, <laughs> um, it, 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 it's not surprising, but always, but it's very... Um, comforting how many people come every year constantly you know and how much how much people love him how much people want to still hear from him and you know how, how important this place is Graceland and the hotel and all the different attractions and trying to accommodate people but stay longer than just you know and people want to stay so we're kind of ex it's expanding mm. uh, pretty rapidly yeah. um, and I find that you know that to be 
compelling. It's not only Elvis, it's people truly care about Lisa, they truly care about her being happy, they truly care about her being successful. Uh, and it's really the, the song and the album where no one stands alone and where no one stands alone is Graceland. Like having an extended family. Yeah. <laughs> About 20 million of them. <laughs> <laughs> when it does come to the, the madness and, you know, here's another Elvis story, another conspiracy theory, whatever. Do you read any of these? Do you just dismiss them? Do you laugh at them? I, I'm just always intrigued at how you would deal with them if you do have to deal with them. I'm dealing with all the ones about me. I can't be bothered with <laughs> anybody else at the moment. No. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't take, I, I can't take it, you know, I, I don't take it seriously. Mm. If you're talking about the crazy, sensationalistic, nutty stuff, yeah, I, I, I just don't read it. It would have been interesting as well, and so lovely. Um, for him to have been able to give you advice, that would be amazing. I would that that I would very much like wish that could happen. Mm. Um, because I do feel like you know he would be there. He would protect me. Yeah, like, I feel like that's the protection that I haven't ever had since mm -hmm. I was nine. And so I think, especially recently, I think that he would absolutely protect me. Um, which is a nice feeling knowing that he would, you know, and that's kind of why this song, it, it, that's why I did it. I, it just fell in my lap and I, you know, I, I just, I thought, oh, I'm really connected to it right now. For some reason this is happening and I need to do it. And in terms of your own words as well, I mean, you know, you've spoken about it before, about a biography and you, you know, coming out and setting all the records straight as well. Is that something that you still... Oh, that was tabloids again. Yeah. Uh, there's been no. There's You've never been, ever never thought about doing it. I'm gonna. I'm. I will absolutely do one. Um, I just don't know when. Mm. I, I haven't had time to think about that. I'm still in the middle of a psychological thriller right now, and when it's over, oh, maybe I can write it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, you know, meaning that, my life. Yeah, yeah. of okay, course. Yes or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get through that episode for us. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be looking forward to that. Some kind of closure. I'm very much looking forward to that. The last chapter. Exactly. Maybe. Not the last. Let's not go there. That's yeah, no, sorry. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a bit too dark. But yeah. I, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Actually, I was just thinking that when you're talking about your father and that, those words about him becoming a father and then when you became a mother. And then when, you know, Riley said, I'm going to go into the business. W what would you take then? I felt like Riley had a really good head on her shoulders. If I had a child that did not, mm -hmm. didn't seem to be strong in, in themselves, I wouldn't allow it. Riley was absolutely like, I'm going to model for the money, and then I'm going to act, and then I'm going to be a director. And I was like, okay. She had a whole plan, and she did everything she said she was going to do. So I wouldn't do that, though, if I felt there was uncertainty or vulnerability or mm -hmm. a weakness. You know, I would try to I'd have him hold until 18. And also great as well, you can, you can then impart the advice that we're talking about that sadly your, your dad wasn't able to give to you. Yeah, yes. I mean, I live each day like it's the last with them now, you know, I really mm -hmm. soak in everything. What was the, the hardest bit for you when you were coming to producing this album, Joe? Uh, you know, I, I think there was the song selection because I think it was very clear in my mind and I think Lisa felt a lot of the same ways. This, I think the single was 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 the slowest because it wasn't a huge hit. Mm. It wasn't a, it wasn't a gospel song that people were used to. But you know there were versions like Saved. You know because Saved isn't a classic gospel song, but it's just such an amazingly powerful song. And what I looked for was the passion. So what I what I tried to do is I listened to Elvis, and the way I was able to listen to him was listen to his performances, and the, the you could tell when he loved the song. You can tell when he sang that song like no one else had ever sang that song before and maybe the last time he'd ever sing that song. So it was, it was feeling a certain way, getting something and then getting everyone else on board. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but the hardest part might have been just getting through it because it was so emotional. I, you know, it's just, you know, you know, crying in the chapel, tears of joy. You know, th there are so many tears of joy that have been shed uh, in this project that it's uh, definitely, uh, you know, something I'll never forget in, in working with Lisa and just hearing Lisa in the same studio that her dad had recorded 50 years before. So she sang, uh, you know, the, the song in the same studio uh, that he had done the audio for the 68 special in. Uh, and just that gravitas being there uh, was just really so amazing and special. What do you think you, you've learned from this or, or what will you, you take from this experience now, do you think? Um, it was done in a, out of a labor of love. I mean, 
Joel had a vision. I thought he was nuts singing, you know, on this thing. So when I went in and then I heard the first, um, the first uh, copy, I, I, I'm just like, I forgot if I was singing the lower or the higher harmony on some parts. Um, and it, it, was felt, it felt really right. I didn't know what was happening. I followed Joel's, what his vision was. I listened. I went in. I was very pessimistic about it. And, I, you know, my head is so far up my own rear with problems <laughs> <laughs> and situations that I needed to get it out of there long enough to make, to like do something productive in all this. <laughs> try, to have, try to have something good happen now, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it was, and it is. And it feels like, it, like I said, it feels like a hand came yeah. out or down or, yeah. um, and, and, and that's really been moving. It just feels right. It's one of those things. I've just followed it and it's, it's right.